On today's episode of RC Kicks, we're replacing the infamous G11 part on the Vanquish with a lovely carbon part. Stay tuned to find out more. kicks on today's show we're talking vqs and vanquish and particularly we are focusing on the g11 part the what was an infamous part for the vanquish so if you don't know i'll go over a little bit of history about this part and what the issues were and then we can talk about how the vanquish uh, vqs has changed that slightly um, and then some potential options to fix that problem. Now, the issue up to the release of the VQS was that almost no one could run their Vanquish. Why? Well, this part at the back of the G11 part was super fragile. Because of the age, the plastics had deteriorated and that G11 part takes massive loadings from all different angles. So they were just cracking at the slightest thing. I put this, this actual car on a table and I cracked the G11 part just from the compression of putting it down. So actually running it was becoming almost impossible and the G11 parts being that they hadn't been re-released, were becoming impossible to find and ridiculously expensive. So everyone stopped using them, even though it's a lovely car to drive. Skip forward a little bit, luckily the VQS was released and the G11 part hadn't been modified to the point you couldn't take one and put it in your VQS, which was great. So you could now run your uh, old Vanquishes if you wanted to, if you can get the parts from the VQS. Now this sounds like it's a real win-win, everything's fixed. The problem is that the VQS was a very expensive kit and not many people bought them to break them. I guess it's because the kit was so expensive when they actually looked at breaking the kit down, there wasn't that much margin on it, so a lot of people haven't really broke them down. I've been trying to get a few parts myself and they're not as common as you think. At the moment, you can pick up a VQS really easy. They're all over the place. And I get the feeling that they haven't sold as well because of the price of them and people don't think they're real value for money. Um, so yeah, so you can buy a kit, but getting parts is still really difficult. So sourcing a G11 is not as easy as you think even today. So in another year or two years, they, they'll be difficult again and you won't get one. So to come up with a solution for this permanently that you can do yourself and you'll never have to worry about it again and you could take your car out and drive it around no problems whatever is to go for something like this. Now this is work in progress and as far as I know there's only two of these done so far. Um, what it basically is is a G11 part made in carbon. Uh, there's also an upright you can get as well. Uh, these are from Fiberlite. I'll put links in the description and I'll put some information below. This is something they're just starting on, but they only do the carbon bits. What they don't do is the hardware that you need to make this work. So what do you need? Well, if you're going to go with the carbon upright, you need to have these um, uprights from a Avanti 2011. Now, as of this video, they are around and you can get them. So that's not too much of a problem from that point of view. Um, the challenge comes with these little parts that you need. These are the bits that go underneath. Trying to find these from Tamiya, they're on a, a real um, back. Um, two to three months to get a, a, the bag that they're in. I'll put the description of all the parts you need in, in this video. But uh, yeah, so getting those is really difficult. Now I've borrowed those from my brand new, new in box. Um, Evanti 2011 but um, they there is people that make these so I'll put some information in the description I'm getting some of these made but for this video I wanted to do this video quickly I wanted to make sure it all works and everything so I've borrowed them from my one what you can do one thing that is nice if you want to do this if you have a Vanquish that has a broken G11 where it's cracked you can salvage the parts off of the bottom by slowly cutting them off, then you don't need these parts. You can use the plastic ones um, on this. And that I would probably recommend 
being that how difficult those little tiny things are to get and I'm pretty sure that they'll become more difficult to get as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Now for the sake of this video I'm going to fit this to my VQS. Why instead of putting it into the Vanquish? Well I haven't put this in for the first time yet and there may be some teething issues and stuff like that and my VQS is a lot stronger obviously because it's all new so I would rather fit this to the VQS first make sure I get everything dialed in as I want it and then later on I will probably move it to the um, the Vanquish or I'll buy another one and then fit it to the Vanquish as well at the back. I haven't decided whether I'm going to use the upright or not. I got it anyway because while I was ordering this I might as well get that. Um, so I don't know yet but we'll see. It's just all a bit sort of as it happens kind of thing but I thought hey maybe it'd be interesting for you guys to see this as as you work through it because it's not a turnkey solution yet whether someone will actually make a kit that you can just buy and then bolt it all on but we're nowhere near that stage like i said this is probably number two in the country that's being tried so i've seen it fitted and it works so i'm not sure exactly what kind of bits and pieces i'm going to need from the hardware i've got my trusty box of um spacers and screws and stuff so hopefully i've got enough bits and pieces to make it work right let's crack on and see if it's any good Now there's lots of different screws that you attach to the G11 so when you dismantle it make sure you remember which screw goes where. It's very important when you're putting it back together again. It turns out I actually replaced quite a lot of the screws with bolts. Going into this I was concerned about using the upright. The upright is made of carbon so it's much thinner than the plastic upright that comes in the kit. I was a bit concerned in regard to the dampers, how they would attach to the upright correctly. Would they lean back or would I have to come up with some spacers to straighten them up? But in the end it turned out I could use the standard collars that came in the kit so that part was actually quite easy. In hindsight it was probably better not to attach the gear case cover until later on as it gets in the way when you're messing around with the upright. One of the most difficult things I found was to try and get the bolt back through the arm. You need three hands for this part as you need to keep the end of the dog bone in place while you're trying to push the bolt through the pivot ball. I found I had to shorten the top link to make the wheel camber correct. And there we go, all finished. What do I think? Oh, fantastic. Came out way better than I thought. It took me quite a while to get it to done. And the main reason why it took so long is because I used the carbon upright, including all the bolts, the washers and things like that, because I want it to look factory and I want it to look standard. Um, as well as both sides of the car, you're building up both sides, you need two of everything. So to hunt out and get everything you need to make it look like it was supposed to be like that is a, is a real challenge. But I have to say, once it's done, you would not know that that wasn't stock. It worked brilliantly. Now, would I recommend this upgrade? Definitely. 
but there's a caveat. Now the caveat is this, because you can't buy off the shelf the pack of everything you need, including all the bolts, the washers and things like that, you have to have a trusty box of bits and pieces. And it has to be a good one as well, because there's lots of different lengths that you need, especially this bit of the back here. You need, you need this one that goes all the way through up and you put a nut on it, whereas it's actually on this part here. So I used a piece of plastic tube and then I screwed all the way through and then I put a bolt on it because that's not there. Because the carbon one doesn't have those bits and pieces, you kind of got to compensate for it a bit. So you've got to use your imagination. Um, one thing I made a mistake on, the top upright arms go on the lower um, mount point, not the top one. I put them on the top one and I was having problems with the anti-roll bar fouling. So I had to change that. But after faffing around, now I highly recommend someone out there needs to put together a kit for this, which means you basically buy the kit and it comes with everything you need, all the right bolts and things like that, because it is a lovely upgrade. I'm probably gonna change the front to carbon, so I'll get onto Fiberlite and get the front one as well to match the back one. But you actually see it quite nicely here. So it looks really good. So it's one of those mods, once you've done it, it looks like it was supposed to be like that by Tamiya. So I'm really chuffed with that. You only need uh, two of those. I thought you needed four of the little bits from the uh, Ivanti, but you only need two. But again, it needs someone to actually machine up all these parts to make it work really. Because you basically I had to buy the upright and the uh, G11 part from Fiberlite. Then I had to go on eBay and buy the uprights. Then I had to source the Ivanti parts, the, uh, the two little things you needed from somewhere else. So, and then all the bolts and stuff like that I had myself. And I just happened to have that piece of plastic tubing at the back, which is the perfect length to replace that bit. So it's a lot of scavenging and a lot of messing around, but I can see someone putting that together as a kit and then just selling it and they could do really well. So uh, whether they will or not, I don't know, but I can highly recommend it. So I would say it's not for the entry level person, not because it's difficult to fit, but it, you've got to have enough bits and pieces to scavenge all the bits you need. That's the key. Um, but yes, lovely, 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 lovely. I'm really chuffed with that, really like it. It's nice when stuff turns out to be kind of factory looking when it's done and there's no bodging or anything like that. So there you go, the modification of the G11 part on the VQS and Vanquish. Thanks very much for coming and spending some time with us. Don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss the upcoming uh, builds that are coming from the Escort and the Eclipse 4 from Schumacher. They're all coming this week. And if you could smash that thumbs up, it means that YouTube will probably show this content to more RC people like you. See you soon. Bye-bye.